Uh, my name is Craig Johnson with uh, Rift.io. Um, what I wanted to show you this afternoon was a demo of actually the OSM GUI itself. Um, definitely, if there's any questions, uh, feel free to, to ask at any point. Uh, but we're going to show you some of, the, uh, some of the automation features, some of the new features that are in Release 2, and uh, we'll go through the whole thing. So the login here is what you get when you first build OSM. So when you do the build from the source of the packaging, you'll basically get this sort of login. Uh, the entire release is totally packaged together, so it has an open MANO interface, but you can add other things to it. So I'll go ahead and log in here. Let's try that again. There we go. Okay, so when you first log in here, um, essentially you'll see this page right here. Now normally you'd see a couple different services as we instantiated them. Right now, of course, you don't have anything instantiated, but everything you'd have there would definitely see a list of the services you'd done after you have gone through them. I'm going to run through all of them to actually showing you how to instantiate a full service and show you all the different parts of the descriptors. So the first thing you want to do is actually look at the accounts you're going to connect everything to. So part of the descriptors, if you attend some of the earlier sessions, you can connect them to different config accounts, different Vim accounts, different SDN accounts. So if you go over here to accounts, I'll make that a little bigger. So under accounts here, you'll see where you connect your different account connectivity. Of course, you can add different SDN accounts, different, different config agent accounts, and that's how you'll connect into whatever downstream Vims and SDN agents you, you do. So here's open daylight connectivity. You can use that. You would simply just put the username and password in the URL for it. Same thing for config agent accounts. Right now I have a Juju account configured. If I wanted to add another one, I would add that right there. And of course, you'll see a little green button there that tells you that it's up or not. Um, if you see red or yellow, it means it's not up. And of course, you can refresh that status with the check all con connectivity status button. Now that I have that right there, essentially that can set us up all my connectivity, and I can use that to start instantiating my services. But now I actually want to see the actual VNFDs and NSDs that I'm actually going to instantiate, and how I construct these VMs and these services from that. So if you go up to here, up at the top, and click Catalog. So this is actually where you start seeing some of the automation features we have to actually build the different VNFs and the different network services and how we construct them together. So you see two tabs here, NSD, which stands for Network Service Descriptor, it's how we actually construct our services together, and VNFD, which is the VNF descriptor. Now, of course, each one of these are, represent package files, so I could upload them and download them. So if I wanted to upload a new one, I'd click on that one. I could go ahead and update them if I made changes to them, and download any of these package files if I want to. So you could take anything here, essentially export this to any other OSM instance. I can add new ones here if I want to upload different ones there, and of course delete ones. If I have any of these that I want to make changes to, it's very simple to simply, if I have a template there, make a copy of it, and it'll make a new one for me. So the first thing we want to do is we actually want to see the individual VNS together, and with that, we'll actually take those VNS and construct a full service out of them. So I'm going to show you a very, very simple example that is essentially just two VNFs that are on a single LAN segment, and they're going to ping each other. So very, very simple setup here. So here I've got two different VNFs, and I'm going to show you each of these parts of VNFs and how you can actually make changes to any one of them. So here one, it's called ping. I'll go ahead and move this out of the way a little bit. So this VNF is very simple. If I wanted to create a new VNF, of course, I would just click Add there. But this one is just simply one called ping. And if I go over the parameters of this one, you see that it has one VDU assigned to it. One VDU, essentially a VDU is a virtual machine. So if I had an additional one, let's say this VNF consisted of multiple virtual machines, all I would have to do is click Add VDU and make that a little smaller, and you would see that there. But a lot of the simple VNFs are going to be one VM, one VM associated with them. So as I click on this VNF here, you see several different parameters associated with it. Each one of these are changeable and editable. 
Um, if you want to see the actual output of the package files, you can, of course, do that with this YAML view right here. It shows you all the raw data, but you never have to touch that at all. It just tells you what the actual file format's going to be if you wanted to export it. So here, of course, you have the name, and I could change that if I wanted to, you know, DNF1. There's a short name, just more of an identifier. Here's the vendor. Here's the logo. So the logo is a PNG file. If I took this and I uploaded it into the package under assets here, you could actually upload a package file to say this particular logo, which you see over here, would be associated with that VNF. Here's a simple description. We have some version control with it as well. If you need to update between versions, you can do that here. You scroll down a little bit and you'll see some of the more advanced options. And none of these options are required, but depending on the VNF that you're working with, you may want to add these. So you have an internal VLD. If this was like I showed you before, where I had two different VMs associated, maybe I need a, a virtual link in between them. And then when I instantiate them, I need my VIM to instantiate a virtual link between these VMs. I can do that right here and simply do that from there. Here's the individual VDU. So this part's pretty simple. It just shows you I have one VDU associated, and then when I click on that, you'll actually see some of the properties of that VDU. If you click more down here, you'll see some in more information. This one actually has a Juju charm associated with it. So this VNF, when it comes up, is actually going to access Juju to actually do some configuration from this VNF. This could be done via a Python script. It could be done several different parameters. I could change script, rest, rest comp, but here I'm just using a Juju charm. So very simple to set up there. Just telling you this is the charm that's going to be associated with. So when I instantiate this VNF, it's going to use that Juju charm server that I specified over in the account tab. Here's the config access if I actually want to put information in here. I don't have to put anything in here. I can put any of this on instantiation. So let's say this was uh, composed of several different services that might come up and has a different IP address for different services. I can leave this blank in here and then when I instantiate that on runtime, I can put a different config username and password in. Here's some of the different attributes I can set in here as well. So some priorities if I have multiple config items that are uh, with each other some, and delay items if I need to wait a certain amount of time to do one config action to another one. Now I scroll down here and you see service primitives. So service primitives in the context of the VNF here is our day zero config. Um, and what I mean by day zero config, this is going to be, since I'm just talking about the VNF itself, these are going to be attributes that every VM that I'm going to be constructing in this service needs to configure. So if it's something like a virtual router, it's going to be you know, standard username and password, basic SNMP traps, logging information, something that's shared between everything here. That config primitive here is what's actually going to bring that VNF up. I can set different parameters to it. I'm saying start right here. I can add different parameters to say I want this to be a different type set to it. Different ones for stopping right there. So these are things I can add to actually do some advanced configuration as this VNF comes up. More service primitives here. This one, these service primitives here are actually setting some SSH keys into this particular VNF. So I'm saying this one, I want to preset an SSH key I'm going to preset some login data. So I'm saying SSH host name, here's a management IP address, there's a username I'm presetting. So if this is a, an image you're getting from a vendor, maybe you want to preset a username and password as it comes up so you don't have to manually configure that. These are just a couple different Linux VMs that I'm bringing up here. There's a private key that I'm setting. And here's an actual ping uh, config primitive I'm setting. So scroll down a bunch more. You can have as many of these as you need to. and as you can just keep stringing these along to add more and more configuration primitives. You go down here, but you actually see how I'm actually doing management connectivity. So the management connectivity you have here is useful because anything I set as a management address here, when I bring this service up on the dashboard, you'll get a link to whatever the actual management of that VNF is. So if it has an internal web server that you want to use for management, I can set that right here and I can say, access this internal web server. Whatever IP address it happens to come up, whatever it gets dynamically assigned in OpenMano or OpenStack, it'll create a link to that IP address with whatever port I set here as a link for the user to go up and actually access it. I have some dashboard parameters. So here, I can actually pull some custom information from this VNF. So we can use this in a couple different ways. 
So this is actually a REST API parameter to say, access this particular API on this port and it will show up in the dashboard. Now we can do a couple things with that. So I can just take this and display it. Let's say it was something like a, a VIMS or something that was measuring call rate. I could say measure what the call rate coming in is and show that on the dashboard. I can also use that information to actually trigger scale in and scale out actions. But here I'm just using that API to pull that data. That doesn't have to be REST. REST is what we support right now, but there are things like SNMP and things on the roadmap. But REST, you, know, you can use the REST conf here to actually pull any VNF data that you want to. Here you have some more advanced configuration items. You see IP profiles there. What I can actually do is actually set different IP addresses if I want to. I can set security groups in the context of OpenStack. I can set individual DNS servers. These are all different parameters that I would set for each one of these different interfaces that I configure. Here now you see connection point. So connection point is how many external connections this VNF needs. So this one has a single connection point. And what I mean by connection point, think of it if I was instantiating something like a virtual router. That would need at least one or two Ethernet interfaces associated with it that I would actually connect to other services. Maybe it's simply just an endpoint and it doesn't need anything else but the management address, but maybe it needs to connect several different services together and I need to chain this to a very complicated fashion. I can add as many as I want to there and just add more and more connection points. I can specify the type connectivity I want to here. So I have port security enabled. You can see what I have there. Now here's that HTTP endpoint. This is actually going to display on the dashboard this API parameter that I'm pulling through. But that's all it's gonna do is display it. And I'm gonna say I wanna pull it every two seconds using an HTTP get method. What I can also do is I can actually not just display that, but actually use this information for scaling parameters. So I can say I actually wanna use that for monitoring. So if I click add there, and just select the one I already defined above. See where it says API v1 ping stats? That's the same one I defined right here. So as many as I add right there, I can use those for monitoring parameters. You see placement groups right here. So these are optional parameters. If I want to do affinity or anti-affinity groups in OpenStack, I can optionally do that right here. To say I want this particular VNF to be placed together among different VMs or placed apart from different VMs. Um, essentially, this is, a, uh, um, this is a, an abstraction concept. In OpenStack, this looks like affinity groups, but in different VMs, this could be represented in different ways. There are the different VDUs I have associated. Here I can set some different component values here. So essentially, this is what we have for the individual VNF. So anything I do here, anything I add here, automatically gets updated in the YAML file. So if I click here, just show you kind of the, how this looks like when you go through it. Everything I showed you that I clicked through on there and I just put on the GUI there, automatically gets updated here. So you could take this and update it and you could actually write this yourself if you wanted to, but if you look at all the different parameters that you'd have to set to, it'd be pretty complicated and be pretty easy to, to mess something up. So optionally, you can edit this and take this offline and re-upload this, and if there is an error with it, if there is something that doesn't validate, it will actually tell you that this doesn't pass validation and where it doesn't pass validation. Essentially, these are all the different parameters I showed you. These are the config parameters where I set the host name, username and password, private key, things like that. There's a CPU VM flavor. This is one vCPU, 512 meg, four gig. There's the image file, the checksum for it, and the actual cloud init file. So everything that you saw over here, this essentially gets associated with the YAML file. So as you're updating on the fly, we automatically update that. The other VNF is essentially the same thing. The Pawn one does exactly the same thing. So those are the two that we're actually going to be working with. Any questions on those two VNF? Yeah, go ahead. Little of both. So you can upload the image inside the package file. So the package file is just a tar.gz file, and there is a images folder in there that you can place the image as well. If you place the images in there, we will upload it to OpenStack for you. If you don't place it in there, we'll check Glance to make sure that image is already there, and if it's not there, it'll say that image is not there. So both options are possible. 
You can. So yes, this part is just the actual network service I'll show you in a second. This part is just the individual VNS as I want this individual VNF to boot up. Constructing a service is how we actually put all these together. Any other questions on just the, the VNF portion of this? Okay, so we've got the two VNFs that we have configured here. What I want to go ahead and do now is take these VNFs and actually construct a real service out of them. So if you remember, each one of these VNFs, I told it what the CPU, memory, storage was, cloud init parameters, some basic service primitives. And I also said these are going to have an external connection point. So each one of these VMs, as they come up, is going to assign an external Ethernet interface to it. Now if I go over to Network Service Descriptor here, an NSD, you'll actually see some more information. So I have a couple already configured here. Um, you can configure these yourself and add new ones here just by clicking that Add NSD, or if you can take any one of these and make changes to if you want to as well, and just clone them. But if you see this one here, here's actually the configuration that I'm going to do. So this one has a couple different ones already associated with it, and I'll show you how I construct each one of them. Let's make that a little smaller. So you see here, I have the two VNFs, the ping one and the pong one. Now if I wanted to add these here, let's just pretend they're not there. All I really need to do, go over to the VNF tab, and just drag and drop. So now that VNF is part of this service. Same thing for this Pong one, just drag and drop. So I've put these two VNFs inside this particular network service. So all I've said at this point is this network service, I want these two VNFs to be a part of it. And I could drag multiple ones if I have multiple copies of the same VNF. You could do that as well. Down here, you're actually going to see what are called VLDs. VLDs are virtual link descriptors. So this is actually, I'm creating these two VNFs together. And let's say they need a private link between them. Um, so the management link isn't enough. They actually need a separate link between them to actually do some sort of connectivity. Well, if I add that VLD here, you just click that there. And now I have a VLD associated with it. So that's just a virtual LAN segment. Now, how that gets instantiated is all depends on what your VIM is. If it's OpenStack and it's VXLAN or VLAN or FLAP, whatever you have abstracted away, that's fine. All I'm doing is saying, whatever my downstream VIM is, I want to represent this as a virtual link. So you see here, now I actually have two connection points. Because if you remember, in the VNF tab, I configured each one of these VMs to have two connection points, to two external connections. So if I wanted to take these two and just put them on the same segment, all I really have to do, see that one there? Drag and drop there. This one right here. And that's it. So all I've done here is I've said these two VNFs, if I want them on the same segment, I drag and drop a line to them. Now those two are on the same segment. Since I have other connection points, I can do something like this here if I wanted to. And now I have two segments. Now I'll get into actually what the different segments look like. I actually start configuring more specific things. But if I just want to configure addresses between them, all I have to do is create those VLDs and they'll automatically get uh, instantiated below. Go ahead and wipe my changes out and show you the So if I click on the network service here, you'll see pretty much some of the same parameters, but actually more from a network service perspective. It's the same thing there, name, short name, vendor, logo I'm associated, that go under assets here. Here's the two VLDs that I created over here. Let's make that a little smaller. One called management and one called data. Scroll down a little bit more, and you actually see all the constituent VNFs that are associated. Now, all this just got created for me dragging and dropping there. I didn't have to manually click plus and type there, although you could, but simply doing a drag and drop and connecting those items together creates these items for you. 
not deployed yet. So this is simply a modeling tool right now. Nothing is being instantiated at this point. I'm simply modeling my network service at this point. So there's no, you know, there's no production impact to any of this. Here under the VNFG is the VNF service function chaining tag. So this is actually where I can use an SDN component to actually do a full service chain like you were mentioning earlier. So I could click a plus line there and actually configure a VNF forwarding group there. And I would actually do something that's a little out of scope from what we're doing here yet. But essentially what I could do is I could actually create a full service chain with these VNFs using this parameter. If I go back under the constituent VNFs that I have assigned, you'll see some very, very basic parameters just saying VNF, that's the name of it there, start by default, true or false. Now just like, it, just like that VNF descriptor tab, everything here gets associated with the YAML file. Oops, let's do that again. Some of the same ones here. This is where the modeling tool becomes a lot more useful because under the network service, we actually reference the VNFs that you already have cataloged here. And these VNFs, when you catalog them, get have a UUID associated with them. So if you see here, we'll do some configuration. Here I have the type here. This is one thing that's also in uh, OSM release two. We have different uh, emulated LAN types. So you can do things like uh, E1000 for, uh, for GI LAN connectivity, SRIOV, DPDK, things like that. I'm actually showing where I'm connecting them there. These are the different connection points. Let's go under the IP profile. And you actually see under this one right here, IP addresses I want to assign. So I can say this one, local flat VXLAN. Any of these, if you leave blank, are optional to fill in later or you can leave them there to pick whatever the, the VIM below uh, configures. There's the type VLAN connectivity. Let's go back over here. Oh, that's the one I wanted to look at. There's the connectivity. We also have config primitives here as well. These config primitives are more what we call day one configuration. So what I've shown you here, this is actually a service. So every time I launch a service, think of a service as what you would launch per on a per customer basis. So they may have the same constituent VNFs, but each tick for service I'm going to launch is going to be a slice that I'm going to set up where I have one user that is coming online and maybe they need uh, different usernames and passwords, different IP addresses. That's where I have the day one configuration. Connection points. So here we have some of the scaling group parameters. So one thing that's new is experimental and release two is I can actually say, let's say I have these two VNFs right here. And I told you I was monitoring the ping parameters between them. So let's say I wanted to scale this up. Let's say right now I'm monitoring ping and if it's under so many pings per second, that's fine. But if I get above you know, 1,000 pings per second, I want to add a new VM, bring this to the same LAN segment, and configure some external load balancer or something like that to automatically scale between these VMs to scale the load between them. And also, when the load goes down, delete that VNF if it goes away. So this is kind of a scaling up, scaling down automatic setup. I would do that right here. I would create scaling group parameters right there to create a scaling group to say I have a scaling policy that says I want to do either automatic or manual scaling. Enable that is true. And I could say scale in, scale out, different parameters. So I could say, let's say monitor two KPIs. Let's say monitor call rate and call flow. And if both of those match up to a certain parameter, I decide to scale up. Here's the criteria. So if you remember, the criteria that I set before is actually what I set over on the VNFD tab to monitor. So if you remember on the VNFD tab, I pulled the KPI. So I pulled the REST API to say, from this VNF, monitor this REST API parameter and pull it every two seconds. What I can do is, okay, I'm monitoring that API. 
I can use that API data that I'm monitoring to make decisions on a scale out basis. Also, I can manually do this as well. So if I do this manual scale out, I can say, well, it's set scaling and I know how to scale it, but I don't trust it or I don't want to do it automatically. I can just say, let's just do manual scaling. So you have the option as a user to go in there, say, scale out, and it will automatically do whatever I need to. Now, this scale out can be as simple or as complex as you need to. It could be using a Juju charm to actually do configuration, or it could be something as simple as executing a script to configure a firewall, configure a load balancer, whatever needs to be done. Similar placement group type or locations there. Remember VNFDs. Here's where I actually, for the VLDs that I configured, here's where I actually configure IP address information if I need to. Now you can keep this here blank here, and you can configure this later if you like, or if you configure it here, it'll automatically pre-fill in with the option to change it later. I'll show you that when I do the instantiation. Different parameters here, DNS, DHCP, things you can optionally put in. SSH parameters, fairly, fairly simple there. The important thing to remember is essentially the VNF, let me, actually, let me, let me download this and I'll show you. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm going to download this VNF and I'm going to export it. This particular VNF is made up of a couple different things. If you look right here, a VNF is pretty simple. So this particular package has a couple different files. So when you have a network service descriptor, this is all it's really made up of. The checksums, the icons, the actual YAML file, which I showed you, and the scripts that I want to run with it. So here you have the icons. Here you have the script that I'm actually using to start traffic. And here's the YAML file. So I could edit this there and re-upload it. Or just using the GUI itself, I could make whatever changes I wanted to there. So the actual file is pretty simple. Um, to your question earlier, if you were to do something like, actually, let me show you the other one. Let's go to the VNFD. This one right there doesn't have any in there, but if I were to create a folder and call it images, and put the image in there, whatever QCAL2, and uploaded that, it would be in the package manager there. So you could optionally put the image there as well. Also, you can do it directly in here. So there's options if you want to do offline editing and pulling, if you want to back up everything here, it's very, very easy to do. All you have to do is say download everything here, and it keeps the entire record of everything that you're doing. Any questions so far on the actual VNF definition, how we've created them, and the network services that compose that VNF together? Okay, at this point, all I've done is model these things together. All I've done is saying, this is my VNFs, these are my network services, model them together. I haven't actually instantiated anything, haven't brought anything on board. Now is when I actually say, I want to take these network services that I've created, and I want to go ahead and bring them up. So if I go ahead and go to Launchpad and then I go instantiate there, this is where I would do it. So I'll go back to the dashboard to show you what that main screen is here. So anytime I instantiate, this is where you will see services that are automatic, that are brought on board. Now right now I don't have anything, so you know nothing is running right now. So if you click the plus sign there for instantiate, this is actually where I can bring things on board. So you see all the services that I created over in the Network Service Descriptor tab. If you click on this one right here, this is the one I've been working on. It tells you kind of what it's made up of. Two VNFDs, two VLDs, virtual links, and no service function chaining. So if I click Next here, 
This is actually where I decide what I want to do to bring it on board. So if I click instance name and I just call it instance one. Now this name is going to be prepended to everything you see in OpenStack and OpenMano. So any of the images that get pushed, any of the instances that get created, it'll prepend that name to it so you'll actually see what's going on. I can select which one I want to instantiate it on. So as many different Vim accounts as I have associated, I can associate that here. Optionally, this will instantiate them all to a single Vim. If I don't want to do that, I can say put this VNF on this Vim and this VNF on this Vim. Optionally for this VNF, I can say use a different Juju account or different script or different something like that that I want to use. So I'm very flexible on how I can actually say bring these different VNFs on board. I can say do in one data center, do another data center, use one config agent, use a different config agent. So as many as you configure, you'll see a whole long list of them here. If I were to configure one VNF in one data center and one VNF in a different data center, I'd be relying on some sort of southbound SDN connectivity to actually stitch those two together. Here's where I can actually do some input parameters if I want to. So in the descriptor tab, I actually set a place to actually do some custom parameters. I could put that there, or I could leave it blank. Here's that VLD, that management VLAN. Now you see there it pre-filled pre in something, because I already said to pre-fill in management. But if you wanted to change something at runtime on instantiation, of course you could type that right here. You could actually even change it all around if I wanted to. Let's say this particular um, you know, virtual link I'm setting up, I want it to be different. I can configure that right there. Same thing for the second one here. Here's the IP address information. All, all pre-filled into the network service descriptor tab, optionally able to change it here at runtime. Security groups, prefixes, DNS servers, I could add different users for role-based access control and for a future use later. So here, and I won't do this here because this uh, instance doesn't have it, but if I were to click launch here, what this would do is it would go out to each one of these particular VNFs or each one of these VIMs, do the configuration that I need to, bring those instances on board. So if they, I had the image inside the package, it's gonna push that image out to Glance. If I don't, I'm going to check whatever VIM is that it does have that image if the name matches, it's going to bring it on board. In the context of something like OpenStack, uh, whatever I set for the CPUs, memory, and storage, if an OpenStack flavor matches that, I will use that flavor. So I can go ahead and just use what's already in that Vim as an abstraction to pull through. I would configure those there, and now I'm going to use those Juju Charms accounts to actually do the configuration there. So when that's all up and run, you would see I'll show it here, it's actually not going to work because this instance is up, but I'll show you what it looks like when it actually doesn't work. So we'll call that instance one, and I'm just gonna go ahead and click launch. So when I click launch here, what it's going to do is it's going to go out to the different VIMs and do the configuration. So the first thing it's gonna do, it's gonna go out to the VIMs that I have configured and configure, you know, bring up those instances as they come up, bring up those virtual links as they come up. As I mentioned, this one doesn't work because I don't have this config set up, but when it doesn't work, it's actually more valuable because it tells you why it didn't work. It tells you here, no candidate Vim found, which because I didn't have configure. So it's saying this one failed here, and you have some reasons why it failed. So anytime something doesn't work, if something gets, doesn't get configured right, something doesn't get instantiated, you get information why it doesn't. A lot of times if it's something like a, a Vim that's you're missing quota, you'll get that kind of information there. Now, anything you instantiate here, if you want to delete them, so if it's a full lifecycle management operation, this one is actually instantiated. Anything that I have instantiated here, all I have to do is go over here and click delete. And if it's already instantiated in that Vim, this operation will, then will go out to that Vim, delete the instances that I have created, and delete any virtual links. So complete and total cleanup of the entire lifecycle operation. That's essentially the broad view of how we actually do the full service setup. So I showed you actually how to create the VNFs, how to pull them together, how to actually create a network service between those VNFs, and how to actually launch that network service. Any questions kind of so far on how any of these work, or kind of any use cases, any, anything like that? When you, you instantiate it, does it mention the service? Do you not need to What's that? Um. Mm -hmm. So when I did the network service, Under here where it says config agent. 
So it's going to use the one config agent I have by default. But if I wanted a different one, I would just select the one I have selected there. So I could select different Juju charms ones. As I mentioned, I could do different charms if I wanted to, correct. I'm sorry? So it doesn't directly support a heat template. Um, essentially, you'd need to convert that heat template into this OSM format, which isn't too difficult to do, uh, depending on what you're looking at. Uh, but yeah, essentially, what you see right here as the catalog is an alternate form of the heat template. Now, right now, what you see in here is essentially the format that we use as a Yang format. But there's no reason in the future why you can't have different things like Tosca and things like that. Upload that, we can use the same schema to pull that through. Let's see if there's anything else to show here. Exactly right. So when I let me show you a different one that has a better one associated with it. So if you see here under the Vim accounts, if I click Add Vim account, I can select different sort of Vim accounts that I'll use. So just depending on whatever those native APIs for that Vim is, we're going to use that to instantiate it. That's why we have an abstraction for it, why we're not using direct terms for that particular Vim. That's why you saw something like placement groups instead of affinity zones, because it's more of an abstraction to those sorts of things. But every Vim has that sort of, uh, has that sort of idea that we can use that as an abstraction. So what we're actually doing there is we're actually just calling the charm. So however you have that charm configured to do that configuration is going to be what it's responsible for. We're just contacting the charm server. And I'll show you that right here. So if you go under the actual catalog here and the network service that I have configured, It's under VNF, that's right. Yeah, here we are. So here I'm just saying I'm using Juju as a configuration method and I'm calling that charm ping pong from the charm server. Now we're relying on whatever charm server you have configured to have that charm already set up there and we're just going to call it. And we're going to call it because we have this accounts tab here and we know exactly where to call it to. So I can set the name there, IP address, port username, and the secret. So essentially that's going to populate the drop down menu that I showed you where I can actually add those different charm servers. And this one right here will actually say what charm I'm actually going to access on that server. And as many as I add there, that's what shows in the instantiation tab. Yeah, we're just calling an actual name of a charm that you actually already have predefined there, correct. Now, optionally, you don't have to use a charm. If you have something a little more simple, I can just say execute a Python script or a bash script or accept script that's going to be associated with the package, and that script can be run against the VNF as well. So Juju charms tend to be a little more advanced. It's a more of a full lifecycle management. But if you have something simple that just needs to run a script to do basic configuration, you can do that too. So what's the trigger for that? On, on instantiation? So any what's called lifecycle event, so when the VNF comes up or comes down, we run that as a lifecycle event. And that's what's going to trigger the, you know, send a call to the Juju charm server after the VNF fully comes up to do the configuration. 
So here you see I'm waiting 10 seconds after the VNF fully comes up to actually call the Juju Charm agent. This one is day zero config, but you can also apply it to day one config too. So under VNFD, VNFD is day zero config. The same concept under NSD is day one config. So this would be a Juju charm to you know, configure an SSH key, username, password, something that would you know, maybe logging, something that would be very basic to every VNF that you would have that wouldn't change on a per user basis. Hmm? Right, so if you see here under the VDU that I have here, under the VDU, here's where I actually do the configuration. So I say this image that I've uploaded to OpenStack, when I instantiate it, it's gonna have one CPU, 512 meg, four gig of storage. If that matches a flavor, fine. If not, we'll go ahead and use that to push a new flavor. Two ways. So under here, under the VNF. If you were to happen to put that image inside this package file or upload it directly to the launch pad, it will appear inside OpenStack. However, you don't have to do that. Maybe, you're, you, maybe the image is you know, eight gigs long, you don't wanna do that. So you can just say, upload it to Glance yourself and just reference the name of it right there and optionally the checksum too. And if that name matches, we'll go ahead and use that as a match. No, sure, go ahead. It's okay, I can... Ah. <laughs> How easy it is to deploy it, uh, let's say, in a, in a simple, small lab environment. On my laptop, mm -hmm. I'm running DevStack. Mm -hmm. How How easy I can deploy this? Very easy. So let me show you this right here. So the OSM testbed is pretty simple. Let me see if I can find it. Essentially, yeah, I haven't, let me see if I can find the actual page for it. Um, where'd I put it? I'll get it somewhere. Essentially, all you have to do is have a very simple uh, Ubuntu 16.04 instance, and there's a single script you have to run. Um, it's, a con it's all containerized, so it's very simple to set this up. You, you can set up a very simple all-in-one setup. It has uh, an op open mano, open vim already set up, so you can do very simple instantiation with a, a free vim and you can set this all up yourself, yes, absolutely. Let me find this for you real quick. There we go. So all you have to do to install this yourself is a simple Ubuntu instance, run that right there. It does everything it needs to do to install from that. Now it takes a little bit to do, it takes about an hour to fully build from source there, but yeah, it's not too bad at all. Well, that's the content. Was there any other questions? That's the, pretty much the, the thrust of the demo. Definitely encourage you to go out and kind of you know, check it out yourself and play with it. You can start constructing these yourself. The, the model you know, will have updates and extensions as we move on. So there are things like PNFs and VNF forwarding graphs that will actually start to add more on. But the basic model isn't going to change. These are just extensions to the model we already have. All right. Thank you. Sorry, just letting you know, just on the expo floor tomorrow, I would recommend you visit the Etsy booth. Uh, there's also the Rift I.O. booth and the Intel booth where you can get a lot more information on, on OSM and orchestration. So there's a lot of information you can capture more in depth to spend a little bit more time mm -hmm. with Craig, too, and Absolutely. the folks from Intel and get even more info on this tomorrow and on Thursday and Friday. <laughs>